What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, ring your check out. Hollywood Rock was legendary. Hollywood Rock was so fucking funny, bro. He was entertaining. You wanted to hate him because he was a movie star now. He doesn't really care. He came up like he didn't care about the fans. He's just a movie star. But he was so funny that you you would cheer for him. He would make you boo him and he would make you laugh. He would make you cheer. The dude is he's just so good. He's so he was so good as a not likable asshole, but you liked him anyway because he was funny and entertaining. Hollywood rock was one of the best versions of the rock i ain't not even gonna hold you it's it's crazy hollywood hulk hogan is easily one of the best versions of hulk hogan hollywood rock easily one of the best versions of the rock let's get into this one appreciate all love support let's do this thing it's your boy pavi aka wrestling ifs and i'm happy to announce that today's video is once again sponsored by sheath underwear I so last month she sponsored this. a video SummerSlam 2002, when the main event was the past versus the future, it was The Rock versus Brock Lesnar for the WWE title. And although for the past three years The Rock had been one of the most beloved wrestlers in history, things were changing. The people's opinion on The Rock was slowly shifting from our hero to sellout. By mm -hmm. August of 2002, it became clear that The Rock's first priority was now Hollywood. After the success of The Scorpion King, The Rock was getting more and more roles in Hollywood and spending less and less time in the ring, and the fans slowly began to turn on The Rock for going Hollywood. Mm -hmm. So when The Rock got his ass beat by a rookie Brock Lesnar and lost the title, there was no sympathy for The Rock. Instead, everyone cheered for his downfall. Yep. When SummerSlam 02 went off the air, The Rock actually grabbed a microphone and instantly got booed by the live crowd. All he wanted to do was cut a nice promo for all the people in attendance, but the audience didn't want any of that. So care. he grabs the mic and just says, as of now, sing along with The Rock is over. And The Rock just disappeared back to Hollywood. Even though The Rock was going to be gone for months on end, even though he's going to be gone for the rest of the year, a good six months, the seeds were planted for a Rock heel turn. It was a Which heel turn good. that was much needed, but nobody, and I mean nobody was expecting the 2003 Rock heel turn to be anything like how it ended up being. In January of 03, Vince McMahon was in his blood feud with Hulk Hogan and he announced that he is bringing back a special someone to beat Hogan's ass for him. And he announces it's The Rock, the first time we're gonna see The Rock in six months and when we see him, he looks totally different. Now he had the bald fade going on, the mm -hmm. sunglasses were back, and he instantly was just acting so damn extra. The fans hated The Rock because he went to Hollywood because they thought The Rock was a sellout and that he was going to become a typical Hollywood douchebag, and that's exactly what the Hollywood Rock character became. And that's what makes it work. They, they, this is when WWE didn't have a problem calling audibles. I hope that is a thing in the past. You call an audible. If you got somebody that's about, he's getting booed or she's getting booed to oblivion and you want them to be a face, turn them. You have to. It's the only way it works. And they saw this and they went with it and it was perfect for weeks he wouldn't even appear in person he would just be there via satellite and one night hogan was in the ring and he was cutting his promo and the rock just appears on the screen while eating an apple and i was like oh hogan you know just keep going just keep going the rock just wanted to watch i just want to listen <laughs> so the rock is there watching hogan cut his promo in the ring and even though the rock was there live via satellite he still just owned hogan and that was the thing in 2003 once the rock went hollywood he owned everyone and yep. everything every wrestler every announcer every crowd in 03 the rock just ran the show so hogan is trying to cut this promo right and the rock just keeps cutting in and just making a mess hogan is ranting he's being super serious he's trying to sell the match and the rock just starts yawning <laughs> so hogan gets more amped up and he's trying to cut a typical 80s hogan promo and the rock just cuts in and is like yeah hogan it's getting kind of late uh can you just skip to the part where you go let me tell you something <laughs> Let me show you something, bro. <laughs> oh, I love The Rock. We rip his shirt. Woohoo. The Rock wants to go home. And Hogan is still trying. He's doing his best oh to make my this a God, serious this is so good. sell the match and no way out. And The Rock is just making it an absolute mockery, talking about how he has to go eat tofu and he wants to go eat his wife's pie. And yeah, even though he <laughs> wasn't even in the building, he made Hulk Hogan look like a bozo. And once The Rock was back in person, he was as Hollywood as ever. His yep. promos would be legendary. He would just come out and for 10 minutes just own the crowd. He was walking around with a swagger like he truly did not give a fuck. And the best part was, 
he didn't he was a hollywood star now this was just a side gig so he would just pull up and do whatever he wanted act a damn so cool, good and it was comedic gold when he finally did appear in person he was cutting a promo in the ring on smackdown and oh wait sorry you know we forgot the Rock is a big time Hollywood star now. He's a busy guy. Mm -hmm. He has to take a phone call from his agents in the middle of the ring in the middle of the episode of SmackDown. So he's just casually having a conversation on the phone while the crowd's just waiting for him to be done any second now. So then he hangs up and he's fine. He's back to normal. But then he gets a call from his wife, so he takes a second phone call in the middle of his promo. He was just in his bag. In one promo, one minute the crowd would love him like he's 99 Rock. The next minute they would hate him and boo him out of the building. Mm -hmm. And in the third minute they were just in awe and cheering because they realized he's just so elite at what he does. This man literally cut a promo on SmackDown where he basically asked the crowd if he should turn heel. One last time, do you want to boo the Rock? Every week, he just had the crowd in the palm of his hands, yep. and it was just remarkable. I remember he had an in-ring promo with Hogan, and does he go there and go face-to-face -face with Hogan like he used to? Is he going to be, you know, Rocky, be all macho, and just be the man? Nope, he's going to spit in Hogan's face and <laughs> run away like a little kid. So at No Way Out 2003, it was the first Hollywood Rock match, and it was also the first time ever we got probably my favorite wrestling entrance of all time. The two-minute intro that builds up, the ambient music, the killer instrumental that kicks in with the guitar, the lights are dim and they start flashing, and The Rock finally walks out just looking like the biggest deal we have ever seen in wrestling. The swagger, the confidence. Oh, man. Ladies and gentlemen, back. Hollywood Rock was just legendary. And and the best part was he would just get even better and more entertaining once he was in the ring. Mm -hmm. Once he actually had a match, he would just be so extra and so annoying yet so awesome. He'd be doing the most extra movements, putting <laughs> on Hogan's bandana, acting like he is Hogan, doing his taunts. He would do like the most simple move, like a Samoan drop, and then start clapping because he was so impressed with himself. And of course, <laughs> his facial expressions were better than ever. Yep. It was just so damn entertaining. Oh, and I don't think so anyone great, will man. ever forget the iconic rock promo in Toronto where after getting booed by Toronto at WrestleMania 18, he comes back a year later after beating Hogan for the second time and just destroys the crowd and gets his revenge, and many consider this one of the greatest heel promos of all mm -hmm. time. And what was really special about this run was, at this point, The Rock was so secure with his position, he was so confident, and he knew that he was the biggest deal around, he wasn't afraid to joke around and put over other people. Yo, during this time, he would have the iconic promos of the Hurricane, yeah, of all those people, were great. with the Hamburglar, he would have the promos with Christian. He called him a hamburger, bro. Shit was funny. And he would go out in the ring and put over Booker T. But without a doubt, the most genius invention during the Rock's Hollywood run has to be the Rock concert. Yeah. This man was so talented, so funny, so at the peak of his powers that not only once, but twice in back to back months, the main event of Raw was the Rock sitting in the ring, mm -hmm. singing and playing the guitar, holding his very own Rock concert. Yeah. There will never, ever be another Rock. The <laughs> Rock concerts, the promos, the matches, his demeanor, his swagger. Hollywood Rock was just untouchable. And even though he was just his persona for three or four months, just four months of him being the character, he cemented it as legendary. He went to Mania, he put on Austin's vest, acted a damn mm -hmm. fool, but he Great got match. his win against Austin. Then he had a match with Goldberg that was 10 minutes, put him over and left. And yeah, in three months, he came, became one of the best characters we'd ever seen. And then he was gone. Yeah. Well, that's what made it even more awesome. In just three months, he took all the fans that hated him, the ones that said he sold out and that Rocky sucks, and in just four months, he became so elite that they were begging him to stay. This yep. will forever be my favorite version of The Rock. It was my first introduction to The Rock. When I first started watching wrestling in late 03 and early 04, I had shows on VHS because of my cousins, and this is how I got introduced to The Rock. And of course, of course, the most important detail was this was the rock that was in here comes the pain this was the rock that was in the greatest wrestling game of all time and it's synonymous when i think of hollywood rock i think of here comes the pain i think of that long ass hollywood entrance that i would never skip and watch every single time i played the game i remember how badass he was in the game his character was just so fun to play with the special animations and everything the clapping the point to the head he wrestled in the game just like how he did in real life when he was hollywood rock as a douchebag, and it was awesome. <laughs> now, at the end of the day, it is so impressive how in just four months, The Rock made this character so iconic and so memorable. It's something that lives on in wrestling forever. And Ash. even though he only wrestled like, what, five or six matches, the promos he cut, the interactions that he had, the crowds that he owned, the everything, just his aura, 
Hollywood Rock will forever just be legendary. And yeah, yep, in my in opinion, facts, even bro. though it was such a short time and it was towards the tail end of his career, this was the peak of The Rock. This was him at his best. This was when he could control the audience so much because he learned everything from 99, 2001. This was when he was at his best. And I just wish, I wish it was longer, but man, it was just, it was just different. It was a great what time, man. What a time man. it was to be alive. <laughs> I was In just the about to say down that. Below, let me know if you have any memories of playing Here Comes the Pain and being Hollywood Rock. Or let me know what is your favorite Hollywood Rock moment. Let me know down below. I hope you guys enjoyed this. This was a great video, man. Y'all go subscribe to Wrestling Gifts. I'm already subscribed. I'm going to leave a like on this one. This was great. This was fantastic, bro. I mean, he's spot on. <laughs> like, Hollywood Rock, He he made that may be my favorite version of him. Or at least one of my, uh, I don't know, it's kind of tough because him as corporate rock was cool. Um, him just being the baby face was cool, but I ain't gonna lie to you. Him, when he turned to heel, it, it, it was just something different, bro. He was such an asshole, but he was so funny. You were conflicted. You were just conflicted because it's like, damn, I want to boo this guy. But he's so charismatic. It's it's hard to boo him, man. So comment down below. Let me know what's your favorite version of The Rock. Do you like corporate rock? Do you like The Rock that was the baby face for a little bit? Do you like Hollywood rock? Let me know down below. Or um, do you like the, the swole rock? <laughs> when he came back to face John Cena, man, he was all jacked up. Do you like that version of The Rock? Let me know down below which one's your favorite um but i appreciate all love and support road two i have care appreciate y'all kicking with me see y'all next one